Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and I have a question to start things off. Do you like Fortnite? Because the answer for me is, no, not really. It's not my jam. I'm not really that big into it, but I do like the way its money is spent, specifically the Epic Mega Grants program. And another thing that I really like, and I've covered a couple times on this channel, just got itself a Mega Grant, and that is Raylib. Now, if you've never heard of it, Raylib is a C-powered game engine. It's one of the easiest to use I've ever encountered. And kind of funny enough, I was actually just doing a tutorial that included Raylib as this news approach. So uh, I highly recommend you check out Raylib if you haven't heard of it already. And but back to the announcement at hand. This is coming from Rayson5. Ray is the founder of Raylib. I think you can probably figure out where the name came from now, uh, which is kind of weird in the world of ray tracing. You probably make other assumptions in this day and age, but nope, that's where the name comes from. Uh, is so thrilled to announce Raylib has been awarded with an Epix Mega grant from Epic Games and Unreal Engine. Thanks very much for the recognition and support for the project. Let's make amazing things. Now, we don't have any details beyond that other than the fact we know that they now just got a good chunk of money. From what I understand from the recently released summary of things, boils down to the sixty dollars to $75,000 is the average that people have gotten, but some of the big people have really skewed that to one side. The smallest I've heard of in terms of getting an um, Epic Mega Grant so far, and a very common number, is $25,000 USD, which is nothing thing to sneeze at, especially for a smaller project like Raylib. It's pretty much Ray and then the community he's formed around him. So if you're interested in learning more about Raylib, again, I've done a couple of videos on it. I, I will link them in the linked article down below. So if you want to learn a little bit more, I have some hands-on articles, uh, but you can see over here, Raylib is available at raylib.com. It is super, super straightforward, inspired by Borland BGI, which dates you. I know what BGI is, but most of you probably do not. Uh, it was a graphic interface back in the 90s, but it was super straightforward and easy to draw back then. And basically Raylib took that approach as well. Ditto for the XNA framework. It's really simple to work with. And as you can see here, it's available on a ton of platforms, Windows, Linux, Mac. Oh, I forget. Debian. Debian? Debian, I think. Raspberry Pi, Android, HTML5, and so on. Plus the language bindings available for Raylib are shocking. It's, it's available in uh, a couple of dozen languages at this point in time. Uh, I'm not even going to guess what some of these icons are, but well, this one I can figure out uh, firsthand. Uh, but it's got bindings in things like Rust and Lua. Actually, I know all these uh, Ruby, uh, Python, Odin. Uh, you're the only one I'm having trouble with. Oh, go. Uh, so it's got language bindings for a number of different languages. But the key thing here about Raylib is that it's really simple. It's also really modular. So all of the various different pieces that go into it. Um, they, they can be used optionally, but the instructions to work with Raylib kind of sum it all up. This is all you need to know to work with Raylib. Pretty much everything is there. Just print that guy out, uh, if you still have a printer and paper, that is, and just kind of leave it beside you, and you could just start working. Everything is pretty self-explanatory, and this is about the extent of what you need to know to actually work with Raylib. And each thing is color-coded, so you don't need to, uh, you can use basically just those little bits that you actually want. So it's a very nicely modular library. It's also really straightforward and clean, as you can see, by uh, this is the documentation that you need for it. But on top of that, there is a ton more for you to work from. So you've got a ton of examples here. You see them running directly in the browser, show you how to do various different things. Everything you need to know basically to do 2D and simple 3D games with Raylib is here. And I said it before in my hands-on video about Raylib, it is my recommendation for a C starter library. So if you just want to get into some reason, you really want to work with C or C++ and you're just starting out, uh, Raylib is hands down my recommendation in that regard. I would recommend it over the likes of SFML, SDL, uh, and the various different other things like uh, BGFX and CAW, etc. It, it is the easiest one to get started with uh, by a mile. So that part I highly recommend. It's also really well supported. So if you are looking to work and kind of step your toes into C and C++ development, Raylib is a good choice. It also has the option it can come completely pre-configured with a development environment. You basically just start writing your code in, I think it's notepad plus plus press a key and it runs it takes away a lot of the difficulty of doing c plus plus build setups by the way stay tuned on the channel there's also going to be a bit of a tutorial about getting started with c plus plus the easy way which will also showcase how you can get up and running with raylib so again raylib i come highly endorsed for me and i am really stoked to see that they're getting this support so a little bit back to the epic mega grants program this was announced in gdc at 2019 uh, again it is a way of funding 
duff. Um, and, and it boils down to they're, they're going after game developers, especially game developers that are using Unreal Engine, obviously. Uh, media and entertainment companies, so that's people making films or experimental films or whatever. Uh, people in the enterprise, if you're doing something that uh, makes sense, so virtual reality or augmented reality or architectural work or something, you're working in educational field and somehow related to Unreal Engine. And then here is the big one, and this is the one that most of us have benefited from, is tool and open source developers. And, and it's kind of amazing how broadly they've supported in the open source space. And that's probably where you've heard the highest profile uh, Epic Mega Grants previously, especially if you are a regular to game from scratch. If you aren't, click that like and subscribe button and all the rest of that jazz because you will get all the news as it happens. So some of the things that we've seen in the past, I'm just head on over to gamefromscratch.com and did a quick search for Mega Grants. And we're going to see some of the biggies. So first off, the last most recent was Cesium. Uh, Lighter got one. Armor Paint got one. Uh, Godot Game Engine. Yes, a, comp a competitive game engine to Unreal Engine. It got a Mega Grant program. It got a fairly sizable amount of money. I think it was a uh, quarter of a million dollars, two hundred fifty thousand dollars, went to the Godot Foundation uh, from the Epic Mega Grants program. Uh, the create an open source painting application, the Dust three D three D modeling application. Uh, they all got uh, support, and then the big one to start things off last year was Epic gave Blender one point two million dollars. So that uh, that giveaway has been a, a huge boon for a number of people, uh, and it seems like Tim is very active in that space. Uh, for example, just last month, end of July, uh, Material Maker had a bit of an update. Material Maker is another one of those open source programs that I really like and feature quite a bit on this channel. It is a Substance-esque um, cr material creation software. It's actually created using the Godot game engine. And I actually I, I basically endorsed them for getting a mega grant program. So basically, I pinged here that this would be an epic choice, bad pun, for a mega grant. And of course, uh, yeah. Tim's there. He says, yes, great. Please apply. And then uh, the guy behind it was kind of like a little hesitant to go in and reply uh, just because, uh, you know, it's it's a hobby for him, etc. And then Tim just basically came back and said, please consider it. It's a great project. Could do a lot of good in the industry. Also, there may be ways to accept funds for nonprofit use if they're used to fund other contributors. So this is a program that is really, really useful to these small open source game development projects that I love so much on this channel. So I can't help but really love the Epic Mega Grant program and I can't highly recommend, basically, if you are in this space and you are working on something, it basically, if you work on something that's been featured on my channel, there's a good chance that you are probably appropriate for a Mega Grant. And, and according to Ray on their Discord server, uh, which by the way is available, Oh, it was right off their main page. So if you want to check it out, their link is available right here. I will, of course, link to this page so you can get to it as well. But he's got details of how he how he got this. And basically, he just went to a web form and applied and bang, got it. So uh, definitely nice to see. A great project to receive it. A great program overall. And, uh, you know, what? kudos to Epic Games. You're making a huge tangible impact in the world of game development. Um I don't really care where the money came from. It's being used in a great way, at least in my humble opinion. But I'm interested in hearing what you guys think as well. Uh, do you think this program is just amazing or do you think there's an ulterior motive? Or actually, you know what? There can always be an ulterior motive and something can still be amazing. Both can be true at the same time. So that is it. Uh, Raylib just got itself an Epic Mega Grant. Congrats, Ray. A great project you've got going on here. By the way, I think it's Raymond technically, but a uh, great project you've got going here and congratulations on the uh, grant. Hopefully it makes uh, Raylib go even further. And stay tuned. There's going to be something at least Raylib related coming up on the channel in the next couple days. All right, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.